Welcome to Naresh Technologies. I am Mr. Bangar Raju and uh, uh, this is a continuous session for our inheritance what we have been discussing earlier. So, in my previous video I was just uh, talking about there are uh, 6 important points to remember while working with inheritance and in the last example in the last video we have been talked about 3. What is the first point? Parent class constructor must be accessible to child class or else inheritance will not be possible. This is the first important point. I clarified you. Why? Because whenever the child class instance is created, the child class constructor will implicitly call the parent class constructor uh, so that the parent class can variables will be initialized and then they can be consumed under the child class. Okay. So, the, for this particular reason, parent class constructor must be accessible to the child class. This is the first rule of inheritance. Second, in inheritance, child classes can access parent classes members, but a parent class can never access its child class members. So, there is a second important thing. Child class can access parent class members, but parent class can never access the child class members. Okay? So, we have been talking at according to the law, children have right on the parents property, but parents never have right on the children's property. The same principle applies here also. Child class has a right on parent members, but parent never has right on the children members. Third point. we can initialize a parent class variable by using its child classes instance to make it as a reference and that reference will be consuming the memory of child class instance, but with that reference we cannot call any child class members. So, I just also showed some few images over there. What is it? So, parent class reference created by using the child class instance and both are accessing the same memory, but in this using p we cannot call the child class members. So, these are the three things what we have been learned up in the previous uh, session. Now, in this let me continue from the fourth one. What is the fourth point? <coughs> See, what is the fourth point is every class, every class that is defined by us or predefined in the libraries of the language has a default parent class. What is that? That is object class of system namespace. Generally, when we define a class, we think like we did not inherit from any class, but by default your class is inherited from object class and that object is the parent class for all the classes that are present in our base class libraries as well as each and every class what we are defining here, object is a parent class. So, because object is a parent class, the members of the object class, four important members of the object class, what are the four equals? get hash code, get a type and a two string. You can call these methods or access these methods from anywhere. Have a look. Object obj is equals to new object. So, what is this object? Object is a class and this is a root class in our system namespace. Now, in this class, if you notice in the IntelliSense, it will display you four methods. It will display four methods there. What are the four methods? 
equals get hash code, get a type, toasting. And remember, these four methods are accessible from anywhere. Means every class will contain these four methods. Why? Because for every class, the default parent class is object. Because the default parent class is object, these four methods are inherited to all the classes. You can watch. Right now, you are seeing only four methods in the list. And now, suppose if you create the instance of the class 1. Notice, class 1 p is equals to new class 1. I am creating the instance of the class 1. And if you notice, p is an instance of the class 1. And for class 1, parent class is object now. So, p dot, you can see 6 methods. Why 6 methods? 2 methods what we defined in class 1 plus extra 4 methods. 4 plus 2, 6 methods. Suppose if you create the instance of our class 2, you will have 7 methods. Why 7 methods? 4 from object class, 2 from class 1 and 1 what we defined in class 2. Totally 7 methods will come into picture for you. So, every class will be having a default parent class and the default parent class is going to be the object class which is present in the system namespace. You do not require to inherit. Simple. Generally, when you are compiling your code, when you are compiling the code, it verifies. Is this class inheriting from any other class? If yes, no issues. If no, automatically that class gets inherited from object. If it is no, automatically that class gets inherited from object. Suppose, think like this is your class 1 and this class 1 not inheriting from any class. At the time of compilation, this class 1 inherits from object class. Now, class 2, compiling class 2. Is class 2 inheriting from any class? Yes. Which class? Class 1. So, no need to inherit from object. The reason object already inherits from, sorry, class 1 already inherits from object. Because class 1 already inherits from object, for class 2 also object is a parent. Maybe it is a grandparent. It becomes a grandparent. So, what is the hierarchy now? Object class, under that class 1, under that class 2. So, you will be having the classes like this. First, object class. Under this we have class 1. Under this you have class 2. Suppose tomorrow we are defining class 3, inheriting from class 2. Automatically class 3 will come in the hierarchy and class 3 inherits from class 2 and that is inherited from class 1 and that is inheriting from object. But every time this will be on the top. This class will be always in the If you just see the Intel license here, when you are just going to type and one more thing here, you will be finding when you are typing, you will be finding two objects in this, one in the lower case, one in the proper case. Do not confuse between these two, these two are one and the same. This is C sharp type and this is IL type. All C sharp types after compilation gets converted into IL types. This is IL type in proper case. And in lower case, that is C sharp type. Okay? And when you are just going to select this, when you are going to select this particular thing over there, and if you notice, you will just check it out once. If you put your mouse over there and read, supports all classes in the .NET framework class hierarchy and provides low level services to derived classes. This is the ultimate base class of all classes in the .NET framework. Understand, this is the ultimate base class of all classes in the .NET framework. It is the root of, it is the root of the type hierarchy. See, it is a very important question in the interviews also. What is the default parent class? The default parent class is object class present inside the system namespace. And because that is a default parent class, the methods which are present in that class, what are the methods? So, the methods are members of object class. What are those? Equals get hash code, get a type and to string. 
or accessible from anywhere or accessible from anywhere means they are available for all classes whatever class you come across in that class these four methods are by default available to you because it is a default parent class. So, do not forget whenever you just asked about a question what is the default parent class for .NET. So, your answer should be object class because that is the root of your type hierarchy and under that only all the classes will fall down or under that only all the classes will come down. Maybe that is a predefined class or maybe that is a user defined class no matter but object will stand on the top of the hierarchy. And because it stands in the top of the hierarchy these four methods are accessible from anywhere. You can call these four methods from anywhere. Have a look. Class 2 C is equals to new class 2. I am creating three instances now. First instance is of object class, second instance is of class 1, third instance is of class 2. Here there is a method in that class. What is that method? Get type. There is a method called as get type. This method returns the type of OBJ, means OBJ is which type it returns you. You can call this get type on all the things right now. P dot get type and you can call it as C dot get type. Like this, you can just call the get type on all. What it tells you? It tells you this is a which type, OBJ is which type, P is which type, C is which type. Run. If you notice the output, OBJ is which type? Object. Which namespace? System. P is which type? Class 1. Which namespace? Inheritance project. And C is which type? Class 2. Which project? Inheritance project. So, the point here is it will tell you the full qualified name. Qual full qualified name in the sense prefixing with your namespace. See, our name does not have any value without a surname prefix. We just use the surname as a prefix. Exactly. The name of a class also requires a namespace prefix. So, the namespace of your class 2 is inheritance project. The namespace of your class 1 is inheritance project, but the namespace of the object class is system. So, that is what it is trying to show you system dot object inheritance project dot class 1 inheritance project dot class 2. But if you understand earlier in the first point I was telling you whenever the child class instance created it will internally call its parent class constructor. If you relate that here when I create the instance of the object class, it will start executing from the object class constructor only. But if I create the instance of the class 1 here, it calls two constructors internally. What are the two constructors? Object class constructor, class 1 constructor. When I create the instance of class 2, now it calls three constructors. What are the three? Object class constructor, class 1 constructor and class 2 constructor. That is what I explained to you in the first rule of the inheritance. Okay? The same thing I am trying to apply here and tell you internally that many number of constructors will be called for you. So, this is the fourth important point. What is the fourth point? Every class that is defined by us or predefined in the libraries of the language as a default parent class that is object class of system namespace. So, the members of object class, what are the members? Equals get hash code, get a type, toasting or accessible from anywhere. From anywhere you can access all these particular four members. The next fifth point what we require to learn, I will tell you. But before that, we will talk about a topic called as types of inheritance. Types of inheritance. What these types of inheritance will tell you is, it will talk about the number of parent classes a child class can have or the number of child classes a parent class have. So, the types of inheritance we will talk about the number of parent classes a child class have or the number of child classes a parent class have. This is what and according to 
C++ according to the C++ because why I am telling according to C++ is object oriented programming came into picture from C++. So, according to the C++ there are 5 different types of inheritances here. What are the 5? Multi level. Hierarchical, hybrid and multiple and multiple. So, what are all this particular five? I will tell you, uh, have a look on this particular image to understand them. First, single inheritance, what is single class 1? and class 2 where class 2 inherits from class 1 and this class 2 has one parent class to it this is called a single inheritance. But what is multi level? Multi level is also very similar like single only but thing is when you have class 1 class 2 one parent and one child this is single but one we have one parent and multiple childs means in, in this hierarchy linear hierarchy class 1 under that class 2, under that class 3, this is called as multi level inheritance. Okay? But very similar here, single, multi level, both are very similar. When there are two classes, they call single, more than two, that is going to be called as multi level. And if you come to hierarchical, hierarchical, what is the difference? One class has multiple children. See, our parents have multiple children, and not only we, our brothers and sisters are also present, and all of us are the children of our mother and father that is what a single parent class having multiple child classes is what we call hierarchical inheritance. And the fourth one hybrid what is hybrid? Hybrid is a combination of multi level and hierarchical a combination of multi level and hierarchical what is this if you notice class 1 under that class 2 class 3 what is that hierarchical but see class 1 under that class 2 under that class 4 what is that multi level a combination of multi level and hierarchical is what we call as hybrid inheritance okay and lastly multiple what is multiple one class having multiple parent classes here one parent having multiple children but here one child having multiple parents this is called multiple if you understand hybrid is a combination of three things now multi level hierarchical and multiple you see class 1 under the class 2 class 3 what is that hierarchical class 1 under the class 2 under the class 4 what is that multi level again class 2 class 3 under the class 4 what is this multiple the combination of multi level hierarchical and multiple is what we call as hybrid inheritance so like this we have different different types of inheritances that are supported for you according to c++ but I try to simplify this particular thing. I am trying to simplify the things. What I say is actually a single inheritance or multi level inheritance, both are very similar. You are having two classes, three classes, four classes, you are calling multi level. If two are there single, more than two, you are calling multi level. But that does not make any difference. Here also, class 1, under that class 2, class 3. But the point you understand here for class 2, there is one parent. For class 2, there is only one parent. For class 3, there is one parent. If you remove class 3 there, that looks like single or multi level only. And you watch it here also. Class 2, one parent, one parent. For class 4, two parents. And here class 3 has two parents. So, I am trying to simplify the concept like this. What is it here? Simply, there are only two types of inheritances. What are those? One, single inheritance. Two, multiple inheritance. A simple way how you can just understand it. What is it? If at all a class has one immediate parent class to it, we call it as single inheritance and if it has 
more than one immediate parent class to it, we call it as multiple inheritance. If you clearly understand this, there is no point of talking about a 5 at all. If a class has a one immediate parent class to it, we call it as single inheritance and if it has more than one immediate parent class, we call it as multiple inheritance. In the sense, have a look. I am calling this as single, not multi-level, no, I am not calling multi-level, I am calling single. Why? What I said to you, if a class has one immediate parent class, see, how many immediate parent classes class 2 has? One. How many immediate parent classes class 3 has? One only. Immediate parent. So, for class 3 immediate parent is class 2, for class 2 immediate parent is class 1. So, this is single. More than one immediate, we call it as multiple. If you simply follow this particular definition, there is no point of confusing with single, multi-level and all this particular thing. One immediate parent or more than one immediate parent. Now, come back to this picture and watch. How many immediate parents class 2 has? One. Single. How many immediate parent classes class 2 has? One. How many immediate parent class class 3 has? One. How many immediate parent classes class 2 has? One only. Here also, one only. So, are we supported with all these things miss? Yes, we are provided with all this particular option. Now, come here. How many immediate parent class 2 has? One. How many class 3 has? One. And how many class 4 has? Two. More than one immediate parent class, multiple. And immediate parent class is for class 3, class 1, class 2. So, more than one. So, what I am telling is, if you have one immediate parent, let us call it single. If you have more than one immediate parent, I am just calling it as multiple. See, there is no point of confusing ourselves with all this particular thing. Just simply let us check how many immediate parents are have. One only, single. More than one, multiple. Okay. Now, what is the fifth point I want to tell you in inheritance is, this is the fourth point, the fifth point. What is the fifth point, you know? In C sharp, we do not have support for multiple inheritance through classes. What we are provided is only single inheritance through classes. This is the fourth point. So, we are not supported with multiple inheritance here. What we are supported is only single inheritance. What is this? More than one immediate parent classes are not allowed. How many immediate parent classes can we have? One. Now, let us analyze what is provided, what is not available. Is a single inheritance supported? Yes. Single inheritance is supported. Why? One immediate parent class allowed. Is a multi-level supported? Yes. Here also one immediate parent allowed. Is hierarchical supported? Yes. Hierarchical also supported, one immediate parent. Is a hybrid supported? No. Why? Class 4 has more than one immediate parent classes. Is multiple supported? No. Class 4 has more than one immediate parent classes. Yes, see. Two immediate parents, two immediate parents. So, hybrid not supported, multi-level also not supported. What you are supported? Single supported, multi-level supported, hierarchical supported. But multi-level and hybrid are not supported. So, without that, my point of discussion or my view is, my view, according to my view, just remember only two points. One immediate parent, single, more than one immediate, multiple, multiple not supported with classes. Single supported, you call it as single or you call it as multi-level or you call it a hierarchical, no matter, however you call, all are having one immediate parent only, not more than one immediate parent. So, they all are supported for us. So, this is the fifth rule of our inheritance. What is it? We are provided only with single inheritance through classes, but not with multiple inheritance. Okay. Next, the last thing, the last, sixth point and the last one. Earlier, I demonstrated you, whenever I create the instance of the child class, first the control jumps to class 2 constructor, that is the child class constructor and this will implicitly call its parent class constructor that is class 1 constructor and class 1 will call its parent class constructor the object class constructor there is a different story but class 2 constructor will call its parent class constructor i showed you the execution process also by placing a breakpoint there if you watch execute the code again 
and if you just execute your code now execution starting from the main method the main method of the child class and from here the control jumps to the child class constructor control jump here and from here without executing it it will jump to its parent class constructor actually internally it will jump to object class constructor also we cannot see the code because we do not have the source code of object class we cannot see but internally class 1 constructor it will jump to object class constructor ok once the execution is completed now so let this execution complete executed class 1 constructor comes back to class 2 constructor executes the class 2 constructor and comes back to main method why from main method we jump to class 2 from class 2 we jump to class 1 class 1 execution completed come back to class 2 class 2 execution completed come back to main method so this is what we have been earlier just to check out the process we have checked out the process in the first the first point or the first rule what we explained you so class 1 constructor called class 2 constructor called but we have a small problem here what is the problem let us go to class 1 and make this constructor as parameterized class 1 means parent class constructor is parameterized now and now this i value i want to use it here plus i this i value i want to use it here plus i i am using the i value there and now if i come to class 2 and run the code i will get an error i will get an error what is the error what is the error is watch out there is no argument given that corresponds to the required required formal parameter i of class 1 dot class 1 what it was trying to tell you is class 2 constructor implicitly calls class 1 constructor but if you want to call class 1 constructor it requires a parameter now without passing the parameter you cannot call so now class 2 was not able to call the class 1 constructor why it was not able to call earlier constructor is parameterized directly call it but right now constructor is parameterized if you want to call it you require a value now and class 2 do not know what value to be sent over there that is the reason why you are getting error in class 2 not in class 1 error is not in class 1 the error is in class 2 watch out the error is in class 2 why class 2 was not able to call the class 1's constructor so what to do implicit calling is not working now implicit calling is not working so to resolve the problem we need to go for explicit calling how to call like this colon base base means referring to the parent class now referring to the base class what is the base class base class is parent class watch this if you watch this carefully when i say base when i use base here it was referring to class 1 and telling asking you tell me the int value i am passing the value when i pass this particular value here when i am going to pass this value and run the code again let us start the code watch from here the control first comes to class 2 constructor execution started from main method came to class 2 constructor and from here the control jumps to class 1 constructor and notice i received that value now i received that value you can see the value of i in that i received the value 10 and after receiving that value it was executing now executing and printing the results to you and it is printing the results to you watch out you got the value so what is the sixth point you know in the first point we learnt whenever child class instance is created child class constructor will implicitly call its parent classes constructor but only 
if the constructor is parameterless, whereas if the constructor of parent class is parameterized, child class constructor cannot implicitly call its its parents constructor. So, to overcome the problem, it is the responsibility of the programmer to explicitly call parent classes constructor from child class constructor and pass values to those parameters. Pass values to those parameters and very importantly to call parents constructor from child class we need to use the base keyword. The base keyword is used here. So, that is what I showed you right now. Here child class was not able to call. Why child class was not able to call? Because it is not aware what value is required for execution. So, that is why programmer should take the responsibility. Programmer knows what value is required. Okay, why? We are the developer here. We know what is the value. Implicitly computer do not know anything at all. We know because we know we are supplying the value. The value whatever we supply here will go to the parent class. But unfortunately, this is a static value. It is always the same value comes. But if at all you want the value to be dynamic, what to do you know? Pass a parameter to class 2 constructor also int a. So, when you pass a parameter now, what you require to do whenever you are creating the instance of the child class, we need to pass that value here. I am passing a value 50. So, what happens now? The value 50 first reaches to a and the same a value I can pass to my parent class. Watch it. Value 50 again. Be simply speaking, whenever you create the instance of the child class, pass a value to it. The value first comes to child class constructor. From there, it gets transferred to parent class constructor and parent class constructor starts making use of the value and executes. And if you want, you can use this a value in class 2 also, no problem. It is not like this value should be compulsory send off to parent class only. You send to parent class, it is compulsory required. But if required, that value can be used in the child class also. So, this is the sixth important rule of inheritance. So, these are the six things what you require to remember every time before you are starting working with the inheritance. Thank you for today.